Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to another Tech Talk. Uh, just confirm that you can hear me, please, Sean, so that I know I'm not talking in vain. <laughs> no, perfect. We can hear you, and we can okay, see the screen. Okay, cool. Yes, Laka. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is the second little installation uh, on lagging. You'll remember last week, if you were here, we had a look at different types of lagging and, and so on, and also the R rating or the R value rating. One thing I just want to carry forward from last week um, into this week is to reiterate or to remind you that the, that the R rating, as measured by the imperial rating system that is used by the United States and Britain, um, is a very very different measurement to the ones that that well, the, the, the one that we require here so if you have an American product and in fact the reason I'm pounding on this is because there are handouts today and on that handout you'll see two links um, it's not comprehensive by in by any stretch of the imagination I'm sure there are other websites but this particular website has got nice videos uh, explaining and showing how to actually go about creating T pieces and creating bends, cutting it properly, mitering it properly, gluing it, and so on and so forth. It is an American thing, though, so there are some uh, uh, um, tables there on that same website of of thicknesses and R ratings, and those are the American R ratings. So you'll see R ratings like 4.5 and 2.3 and 5.8 and so on. So if you if you're looking for an equivalent sort of a R1, remember that it's it's almost six times what what we require. So if if an R 5.8 rated product uh, in an American market, you've got equivalent to an R1 rated product here. So that's a it's a very easy kind of rule of thumb. If and and and. And in the past, even, um, I mean, I was confused about it because I saw all these different R ratings and this guy said that that's R rated and this is R rated. And it's very simple. It's either R1 rated as per the international standard units or it's R6 rated as per the imperial units. And that's the minimum requirement in a nutshell, okay? So just always be careful or be sure of that. So uh, that I just wanted to drive home again because of the handouts and because the handouts is an American website which will give you a funny idea as to what our ratings are and it will con confuse you again. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to look at installations and uh, how to do it. No rocket science here, guys. It's just a, it's just a matter of getting... Um, I believe uh, it, look, there's no technical m m magic happening here uh, in, in, in terms of um, installations. I believe that... Um, it's it's simply a case of getting a mindset shift, where where you look at we 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 all start to look at lagging as a as an absolutely necessary thing uh, that has to be done and has to be um, done properly. You've got to take time with it. You've got to take care with it. And I'm just getting my spotlight so that I can do that and that you've got to present it as an, an additional part of the installation it's not just a it's not like just a, an, an additional bracket that you put onto a piece of pipe it's a whole installation and there are some i mean there are some specialist uh, pipe insulation install installers that come and do just that on on bigger projects you know and it's a big thing so the the mindset of of including lagging as 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 a not just an, a necessary appendage, but as a separate item in our in our minds, I think is a is a big uh, thing. So, bends <clears throat> bends you can do in two ways, as logic would dictate. Um, you can either mitre and and tape and 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 connect properly, or you can simply force the tube around the bend. Now, here's two examples. Underneath this stainless steel cladding is rock wool. Um, which is uh, the a product that we had a look at um, last week, if you remember. It's it's sort of just off yellow type of. Uh, it's all it's actually spun um, mineral uh, wool. It's like molten rock and it's spun into a wool, and um, it's an incredibly incredibly good insulator. But it does 
uh, need to be protected from the elements, i.e. water ingress, because it gets uh, wet, um, same as glass wool. So you've got to protect it, and this is how they, they do it, and this is obviously mitered. The rock wool is not uh, flexible enough to, for you to bend around anything. It will just break, so you need to cut and miter and, and do the things properly, as, as opposed to this sort of thing where you can also cut and miter, but you can also force it around um, a labor bend or, or a 45-degree bend or a 90-degree bend for that matter. Okay, um, when we look at bends, you, as we say, you can force it around as a tube. If it's the proper R1 rated stuff, it actually goes around bends quite easily. But if you do need to mitre, now this is something that I must admit I haven't um, done before. Uh, I haven't employed um, in my business when I've done uh, um, lagging. I've always done it sort of on site. And 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 just did it did it when once the the pipe work was in and so on and so forth and when I had to cut for small pieces of pipes that that's already in situ because usually you would you'd slip it on hold it back and then solder or or do the joint and then allow it to fall back so that you don't have to cut the tube but when there's very small pieces of pipe and you can't really do that you've got to almost solder first and then cut a piece down the middle on one side and then slip it over and then glue that that slit back together again that uh, that didn't happen very often because it only had to be done on small pieces of of pipe but now on that on that um, handout on the links that uh, that's on the handout you'll find a couple of videos very interesting videos and they go through how to manufacture these things off site so a bend like this You'll manufacture 10 of them in your workshop with a slit there. And that actually struck me as a brilliant idea. And the next shot, you'll see a T piece as well. It, it's an absolutely brilliant idea because all you need to do is slip this over all your bends. You then have got a whole bunch of straight pieces to, to put in between, no problem. Slip this over all your bends and you simply glue it. And that, that glue joint with a with adhesive, uh, contact adhesive is as good as uh, it's as good as solid it's it's not going anyway and then all that remains is to protect it if necessary if it's outside so joints can be made with mitering they are with for larger diameter pipes um you would would probably make a 90 degree bend uh, in sections of of three or four uh, sort of 22.5 degree sections uh, for for larger radius bends and larger diameter pipes but um the as I say, those that each each to his own, and and each job will have its own sort of uh, requirements. This T, <clears throat> I don't know. You'll see on the videos what they do is they take this the the center piece, uh, and and give it a half a, a semicircular cut to be able to fit on the lagging uh, nicely, snug around the diamond outside diameter of another piece of lagging, and they glue that on there straight up. They just glue it straight up. No hole, no cut, no nothing. They just glue it straight on. Then they take a piece of copper pipe and they put it in the in the T piece, the center piece, and it's they simply put it against this lagging, the wall lagging here, and they turn it and they twist and they simply drill a hole through this lagging and Bob's your uncle. You've got a perfectly shaped T, and then you cut the thing open like that perfectly, and you'd make ten of those in your workshop and bring them to site and you pop them over all the T's. These on the right hand side yeah it were that wasn't done like that it was done on site in situ with a lot more effort i want to tell you and um so th this is probably a lot more difficult to do than than to pre-make your teas because of the fact that we're saying these glued joints over here have no detrimental effect if they're nicely glued with proper cement they have no detrimental effect on on the on the on the lagging itself so this is an excellent idea where you where you've got an hour or two in the workshop you make three or four or five of these things and man that's it's it's simple you you, you half your time on site trying to cut and lag and mitre and join and so on on site so that's a nice little um hint that i came across uh, recently as well <clears throat> okay the the best way to cut um uh, this kind of lagging. Now, don't look at the type of lagging that is in this picture, because it's not the correct type. We all know that. It is um, uh, this. This will never be R1 rated. But but if you like, I just wanted to illustrate the fact that you can, if you like, uh, if you struggle a little bit with angles in your eye, 
you can use a mitre box. Uh, no, nothing preventing you from that. You'll see in those videos where they do it in the workshop, in workshop conditions. They've got a little printout, just a piece of A4 paper with various angles on it, and they know that if I want to join a 90, make a 90 degree bend, I need to cut two 45s. If I want to make a 45 degree bend, I need to cut two 22.5s, etc. And they simply slice it. And the knife, uh, the, the the best knife to use is a is a long, thin, sharp blade, not serrated, not a hacksaw blade. Now, what I use is I take a hacksaw blade and I grind the teeth off. So I make it a, a smooth blade. In other words, just like a normal knife blade um, and put it back in the hacksaw. And that works like an absolute charm. What works even better than that is if you get those wide hacksaw blades. The, you get it's about 25 millimeter wide and it's got teeth both sides. Get that because then it doesn't flex as much. And you take one side of that blade and you take the teeth off and you make it a sharp like a normal a normal pen knife blade turn it around and that cuts through lagging beautifully you, it, there's no burrs there's it's, it's a straight edge it's beautiful to be able to join and glue um, and you can use a shorter little Stanley knife blade to cut along the length if required um, but I wouldn't use a serrated blade because it leaves all kinds of burrs and then the surfaces aren't so lacquer to to be able to glue properly, okay? Have a look at those videos and links. Uh, they really are very, very nice, and it just it just shows showed me how easy lagging should be, um, and the installation of it should be. It really is not uh, something that we should be daunted by or worried about. It's actually quite an easy an easy thing. Right, holder bats. <clears throat> when we're putting in lagging. A uh, very common mistake is to, you know, you've got this length of pipe that you need to install. It's 30 meters of of uh, 22 mil pipe you need to put into the ceiling. And so you go to your local uh, supplier and you say, oh, I need 35 or 40 uh, 22 mil holder bats, please. And you get to site and you realize, oh, hang on a second. This thing's supposed to be lagged. But I've got 22 mil holder bats here. Uh, well, then I'll just use that and I'll lag between them. And that's not right. Okay, so now you are, um, you are. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to come. I'm trying to think of a word, and I'm not getting it. But anyway, you, 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 you are going. You're circumventing the whole point of lagging because you're creating many, many, many heat loss areas in within that uh, length of pipe. So brackets, as a rule, must always go over the lagging. They must be sized correctly so that they go, they fit over the lagging and the lagging must be in, uninterrupted along its length. Remember that new builds, new homes uh, need to be lagged. All the exposed hot water pipes need to be lagged in new homes. Uh, we're not talking about when you go and replace a geyser or you install a solar system or a heat pump system. Now it's your responsibility to lag the entire house. No, you can note it as a thing, but it's not your baby then. But it is your baby when you are plumbing a new house. So you've got to lag um, all exposed hot water pipes. And by exposed, we mean those that are exposed and easily accessible, i.e. in a ceiling um, or outside on a, a surface mounted on a wall or something like that. Not necessarily the ones that are in the wall. We don't lag them to R1 value. Um, I suppose it's right to remind you all that uh, if you do have uh, plastic pipes in a wall, you you need to at least wrap them with something, whether it's a sort of a paper tape or anything like that, just to protect it from the cement as well as copper. That I must admit is a practice that uh, I don't even uh, I don't often do that every time. I do it a lot of times, but not every time. So it's even. It's even, uh, I mean, I'm guilty of most things, I promise you. <clears throat> okay, so another thing that I do use is um, 50 millimeter and 75 millimeter PVC holder bats instead of these insulated brackets. Um, that's not quite the right size to go over the lagging of a 22 mil pipe, for example. It'll it'll squash it a little bit. Um, it'll it's about between a 40 and 50 is about the right size for a for a half inch R1 rated lagging uh, situation. For a for a 50 mil, you a bigger pardon for a 22 mil pipe, your external diameter um, 
would be roughly 72 millimeters, 72 to 75 millimeters. So this would restrict it. It would squash that lagging just a little bit. It's not ideal. Perhaps go to 75 millimeter uh, holder bats, PVC holder bats for, for that. That'll be great. Or you can go the whole hog like this. And in this next slide, you can see an installer. It's a colleague of mine uh, that um, that that is that has recently done this uh, installation. And it is so well done. I asked his permission to to take some photos to show that it, that this sort of thing is possible. It's a new home. Uh, this is his hot water reticulation, all lagged in R1, not an exposed piece of pipe to be seen. Um, brackets around the lagging, everything's lagged um, right up to the point where it disappears into the wall or a couple of hundred mil before. And really, there is nothing more uh, you can actually ask. Um, from from an installer, you'll see, you'll notice as well that um, uh, even the cold water pipes have got the same type of insulated brackets. Uh, that's yeah, it's really it's really great, you know, it's really really nice to see. So that's so it's, it's all doable. And um, uh, if you just for matter of show and tell, this is a, a, a fleur image of a bracket or or a, or a holder bat one over the lagging, one not over the lagging, you can see immediately the heat loss that occurs around the bracket when you've when you've stopped the lagging short and then started again after the bracket. That little band of heat loss there, you must know, is present if you're looking at it from the other side as well. So there's a lot of little areas in each bracket that you'll lose a lot of heat. Um, and and one single one might not be significant or, or, or enough to really write home about, but if you add it up and you've got 20 meters of piping, you've got 30 brackets, 40 brackets, now you're losing a lot. Okay, and um, it's it's just uh, it just makes sense to do it to do it like that on the right hand side. Uh, okay, just generally, in terms of when once the lagging has been installed, how do we join it? They are, and we've spoken about glue, like you see here. I mean, there are other methodologies of 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 bringing those two surfaces together. If you talk about this this nitrile rubber, this expanded. Uh, nitrile rubber. I really do prefer the gluing method. It it work, It's an easy method. It's really an easy, even on site, it's easy to get done. There are some instances where it is tricky, where you with funny little angles involved, and you can't perhaps get in there, and you can't keep it apart long enough for the glue to 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 become untacky. Because we know, you know, you you contact adhesive. You need to let it dry for five minutes before you bring it together. Um, then you get uh, products like this. This is a, a tape which is made out of the same material as this. It comes as a self-adhesive thing with a backing. You peel off and you and you wind that tape around either a, a butt joint or perhaps in a tricky situation like a valve where you've got an odd shape that you need to that 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 a tube won't be able to lag. So now you've got this tape, and you can wind it around five or six times to build up that thickness, and and you you essentially are lagging the thing perfectly well with this tape. It's sticky, it, it's self-adhesive, it doesn't come off. Um, there is a, a on that link or the, on that uh, handout, there is two stockists that I've just put there. Now this is Cape Town stockists. I haven't, guys, I haven't gone to major like links to 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 write down every single stockist and, and so on in the country. It's the two that I use in Cape Town and and Quite honestly, to find a stockist near you of, of proper R1 lagging and this sort of thing isn't that difficult. But if you're in Cape Town, I've written down two stockists that do do this. I know the one carries this tape, um, and it's brilliant stuff. It, it's absolutely brilliant. It's made my life a lot easier. If you're using rock wool or anything like that, this self-adhesive foil tape is also the same thing. You can go um, 200 millimeter, sort of uh, every 200 millimeters, you can wrap, wrap around that rock wool twice or use binding wire as uh, whatever the manufacturer requires from you. But there's many ways that we can do it, and 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 it's all doable, and it's all um, relatively easy. And at the end of the day, there's not really much of an excuse uh, to uh, and 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 we all know the the cost factor, right? The, the, the that's because that's the big thing. It's the cost factor. But I believe that you you must cost that in and build it and that's why I said that's a change of mindset so if we all know that lagging is a costly thing and it needs to be built into the quote right from the beginning you will have crossed that bridge with a client 
right from the get-go. And the client is fully aware that they're going to have to fork out five grand for lagging of these pipes. And that's fine. They're fine with it. When once they know what they're doing it for, they're fine with it. So it's not, the burden doesn't or shouldn't lie on your shoulders to now have to uh, bolt on this lagging at your cost. It, it shouldn't be that. It should be uh, just to like another job. I'm actually doing this lagging at five grand. It's actually going to cost me three grand. I'm making two grand profit. What a, what a pleasure, you know? So that's how. So there's not really any excuse about uh, not doing lagging on new installations. Um, okay. Now, when once you've put the lagging on, and if it's outside, you need to protect it. You need to protect it against two things, ingress of moisture, i.e. rain or whatever the case may be, and UV protected. So UV uh, uh, rays or UV uh, has a hell of a negative effect on most things, um, and lagging is no exception. It will it'll destroy certain types of lagging within a few years, and then it's just gone. Uh, then it's as if you've never had lagging. So you've got to protect it. And m when moisture gets in between lagging, uh, and the pipe, it has the same effect and a little bit of wind, you know, it's the wind chill factor. You jump into a pool with your shirt on and then get out and walk around and the wind's blowing a little bit. You're going to get very, very cold very quickly. And that's, you know, that's the shirt absorbing or sucking the heat away from your skin. It's the same effect with the, with the lagging. So in as much as the lagging is an excellent uh, insulator of the pipes, if it gets wet and then, and then the wind starts blowing over it and it's unprotected and... Uh, it's the, it has the opposite effect. Okay, so we've got to protect it against moisture and UV. Now, here are two examples of very, very expensive and very high-end protection. Yes, these are both commercial installations. <clears throat> so not no, no, nobody's expecting you to, to do this for Mrs. Jones in her domestic uh, situation, but I'm just showing you that this is the sort of thing, uh, th it is an absolutely necessary thing to do this is a stainless steel sleeve that goes over rock wool and this is a this is also rock wool slash glass wool slash expanded foam i'm not quite sure what it is to be honest with you underneath here um product uh, but it's encased uh, entirely in a fiberglass shell so they've come afterwards and they've quite fiberglass all over this thing and uh, that's brilliant and nothing's ever going to get in there Yes, you're going to have to break it open and you, that thing starts leaking. How do you get to it? And, all right, but you cross that bridge when you get to it. But in terms of, you know, if the thing's done properly, it's going to last 10 years. And then after that, you can budget for another layer of, of lagging. So you've got to protect it. Now, what do we do in, in Mrs. Jones' domestic uh, situations? Well, the easiest for me has always been to paint. Um, I use 100% acrylic PVA, um, not this particular one, but um, uh, uh, any any hundred any very very good quality PVA. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go a, a low quality paint because that's not really going to do do much, or perhaps a, a roof paint um, or uh, something like that. Some kind of a paint that has got a little bit of elasticity to it, that is UV stable, and don't don't kid yourself. One coat of mediocre or cheap paint is not going to. That does not constitute protection. Um, it, the, 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 you've got to make sure that the thing's protected. You know, you'll see a picture in the next slide where the thing was painted, but it's just it's not, it, it's as if it wasn't. So two three coats of 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 good quality PVA. I want to tell you that 100% acrylic PVA. Um, you put a coat on some lagging now. By the time you get to the other end of the installation, where you start, it is dry already, and you can go back immediately and put a second coat on. No problem. So you can do two coats while you're there. You don't even have to wait before between coats. And that, if it's proper paint, it's nice and thick, you've already done probably a year's worth of, of, of painting, and you only need to recoat again in about a year. And that's what I always tell the clients, that you need to make sure that somebody comes and recoats this thing, because it will. Uh, it will need recoating. Make no mistake. It's not a, it's not a permanent uh, solution. You have to maintain it, and that's uh, true for any, for any uh, paint, I, I guess. But especially with this, because the, the rubber tends to pull and crack, and and cracks start to develop, and you've got to come and repaint and paint into those cracks, and and you'll see. So it's not a, it's not the best ever, but it certainly works like a charm for me. I've done it, and it's, uh, it's um, it's fine. It's acceptable from a compliance perspective. Let's put it that way. 
So this top one, this top most uh, picture here, you can see if you look carefully, it has been painted. Um, a very rudimentary, very thin coat of paint. But besides that, it hasn't helped clearly because it's A, it's thin, and B, it hasn't been recoated ever. Uh, but besides that, it's the way that it's been installed. It's not R1 rated. Um, it it stops short of all the fittings, so all that heat loss is occurring there. Um, this little piece of lagging is absolutely useless. Uh, so this is what we try and prevent. These little upstands over here, when it rains, it's just going to go straight in there between the pipe and the lagging. So this is the kind of thing that is not acceptable. Obviously, this isn't acceptable. Um, there's a, there's something else there that isn't acceptable either, and that's that uh, that um, uh, waterproofing or the the uh, uh, the flashing, if you want to call it that, in air quotes, uh, around that copper pipe, half a tube of silicon, and then this another example of of lagging that has been sort of semi attempted uh, to be painted, but but it it's not effective. It's not it's just not effective at all. Um, that particular piece of lagging was was saturated with water um, at, when I got there. It had it had rained the night before and it was saturated I mean, and it just wasn't doing any good at all. Some more examples of badly installed lagging. Um, this type of lagging with a zip lock on the end is never ever going to be R1 so never, no matter how well you install it it's not going to comply. Um, this has been attacked by UV over a number of months and years. You can see clearly, and that's what it's at. that's what it does. And uh, this is exactly what we try and prevent when we when we say we we want to protect it. Because I mean, this is now completely disintegrated, and it's not doing anything at all. Um, worse than that is the fact that this guy's temperature probe is um, now kind of just floating around in free air, and the, so the the entire performance of the solar system is reliant on one little piece of lagging that wasn't protected and is now eaten away by the sun. And so the entire system falls flat for want of a little bit of paint. And it's these details that Mrs. Jones does not realize and, and they happily live for forever after on, on electrically heated gear, uh, water and they think they're doing planet a world of good when in fact it's just a, a, a nightmare. Uh, some more don'ts um, again. Fittings not covered, uh, not protected. These, this is not painted. So the heat loss here is it's almost you, you, you probably shouldn't even have bothered to put any lagging anywhere because the heat, the amount of heat loss here is just uh, ridiculous. Again, you know, it's all fair and well to split a piece of lagging when you have to and put it over a piece of pipe, but then please make sure that you glue it back again and make it uh, sound. Besides that, this piece of R1, ugh, this piece of lagging is not R1. It's way too thin to be R1. So is this, by the way. I can tell you that at a glance. So um, at, at a glance, the R1 is failure anyway. That's a failure. So is this. But I mean, we talk about the installation. Look at the splits. The splits haven't. You haven't bothered to 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 bring the splits back together again. There's an elbow with a piece sticking out. It's just the, the and the, and this is the. This is typical of, of what we come across, um, and it's not uh, picking out anybody in particular or anything like that. It's simply showing where our mindset is as contractors, as plumbers, and I think I, I really just think it is a mindset. Um, it's not a technical challenge at all. It's not a difficult thing to do, and it's just a mindset, and if we can start to, and it revolves around money. Money, 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 and if we can start to start uh, lay that cost at the consumer's door squarely, at the I mean, it's not your fault that uh, that there's no lagging, you know, but it's you, it's your responsibility to bring it up to scratch and say, listen, okay, I see you got no lagging, it's going to cost you five grand to put lagging in. What the hell is lagging? Oh well, this is this, and then five minutes later she says, yes, please, go ahead. And Bob's your uncle. You made a grand and a half. You know, profit. So there we go. Okay, that's my 10 cents, I think. And uh, thank you once again for joining. And um, I hope there's many questions. I don't know if there are, but let's have a look. All right, we do have a couple of questions here. I'll get straight into them. The first one reads, must multi-layer composite pipe also be lagged? They have R1 rating. No, no they don't. Um, 
Uh, yes, they do must they do be they must be lagged. No, they don't have R1 rating. Uh, whoever told you that is a liar. And uh, just go and question that R1 rating of uh, the, the composite pipe. Um, yes, any pipe must be lagged. The 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 um, uh, uh, standards are clear that if it's a hot water supply pipe, you shall lag it. And also you shall lag the pipes around the geyser, whether it's composite or copper or galvanized or whatever the case may be. All right, the next one reads, how do you protect the lagging when installed outside? Okay, so once again, we 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 go back to the painting. Um, I use a... I use 100% uh, acrylic PVA paint. Um, I can even tell you the manufacturer, but it wouldn't make a difference because there are many manufacturers. But but if you just paint it properly, so if the so it's a multi multi tiered uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, process. Okay, so you need to start off with good, well installed lagging. So it needs to be R1. It needs to be mitered at the corners so that the joints between the lagging come together and you can glue them together so that there's no physical gaps. If necessary, put some tape around them, okay? Then when once you've got a, 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 a good covering of lagging and a good shell of lagging, now you can paint the lagging in order to protect the lagging from the UV and the ingress of moisture. Now you can paint it. But it's no use you paint lagging when there's gaps all over the place and you haven't covered the fittings and you haven't mitered properly, then then painting the lagging is not going to do a darn thing. So it's a it's not just about painting the lagging; it's about doing a good job first of all, and then putting the extra coat of protection on. All right. Now we've got two questions that are very similar, so I'm going to combine them. They read: Are the holder, are the master bats not supposed to hold the pipe, not the lagging? And then if it is supposed to hold the lagging, um, which holder bats do you use over the R1 lagging, plastic or metal? Um, whatever your budget allows. Uh, again, let's go back to this slide. There's two examples. This is a insulated bracket, um, freely available at most plumbing supply stores, um, and you can get them in many sizes. And that is first price. So for to me. There and there is another example of it. I'm going to just stop that there. I'm going to try and zoom in uh, to that, and so you see there that the that the bracket is completely over the lagging. The, the if if the if there's a worry about um, this not being secure enough, let's not talk about the frequency of brackets here, but we talk about that particular bracket. Is it secure enough to hold? both the lagging and the pipe? And the answer is absolutely yes. That is far, far um, preferable to the alternative, which would be, uh, uh, sorry, let me go back to that. So it's far preferable than the alternative, which is that, where you stop the lagging, put in a pipe-sized holder bat, and then start the lagging again. And you can clearly see the heat loss through that little gap. So the, the, to answer the question, yes, you you must have a holder bat that goes over the lagging, not the pipe. And whether it's metal or, or plastic, it doesn't matter. Whatever whatever is going to be sufficient for the job. Um, PVC holder bats, uh, I find, work well. Um, but those, those insulated metal brackets are, are better. Let's make no mistake about it. All right, and then just back to the first part of the question, are the master bats not supposed to hold the pipe, not the lagging? Yeah, well, that's I think I've answered that. Master bats is a, is a, is a, is a brand, by the way. Master bats is, are those red uh, bats, holder bats that, that come with polycop pipe. Um, so that would not be sufficient. You wouldn't be able to use that on a lagged line because they're too small. Uh, unless you've got a 75 millimeter master bat and, and you can somehow clip that thing in there, that's fine. But what I'm saying is, no matter what type of holder bat you try and use, it needs to fit over the lagging. All right, perfect. The next question reads, is the plumber responsible for the painting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we need to protect it. And, uh, and, and if you don't want to sit and paint and that's your choice, you've got to then put something in place 
to to either tell the homeowner to hire their own painter or whatever the case may be. But yeah, 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 you, you are responsible for it. You've got to protect the lagging because in the standards, when they talk about lagging, it is our responsibility to lag the pipes, number one. Number two, it is our responsibility to make sure that the lagging we've installed is able to withstand the expected conditions. And the expected conditions, if it's outside, is going to get wet and it's going to get exposed to UV. It's on us to make sure that we're, we're protected against that. So 100% it's on us. If, for example, you're doing a new installation and the owner says to you, no, 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 I say, okay, I need to paint this. He says, no, 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 I'm, the painter's coming in tomorrow. He's going to paint. Fine. Then it's 100%. Don't worry. But it's still on you to make sure that something gets done uh, to, to protect it. All right. The next one reads, what lagging goes in the wall? You don't need to put R1 lagging in the wall. Um, you, you, very, very good practice is to wrap your pipes in uh, a, 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 a brown. I know I'm going to mention a, I'm going to mention a, a place now with our, that I know stocks it. All the branches stock it. Plumlink stocks this um, tape, this plastic tape. It comes in big rolls, and you can you can wrap that around copper pipes, and you can wrap it around. Um, multi-layer pipes and that is not for heat retention or, or lagging purposes it's simply to insulate the pipe from the concrete or from the or from the cement so you are not required to lag pipes inside of walls um, the standards don't require that they say that you must lag all exposed water pipes hot water pipes must be lagged so to lag a 22 millimeter hot water pipe in a single wall is impossible because the lagging material is 75 mil. A wall is only 110 mil. I mean, you, you might as well cut the whole wall in half. So obviously that's unrealistic. So good practice is just to wrap it up in something to, to insulate it from, not insulate it, but isolate it from, from, the, from the cement. All right, perfect. The next one reads, if you can fill the gap, between the two pieces of lagging over the bracket and tap it up with Armaflex tape. Will that be okay? Perfect. Perfect. No problem. All right. And then uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this, but the question is here. Um, what is the PRB doing to prevent the sales of non-compliant lagging products? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Gosh, you know, we we've been fighting that fight for a while, and it's not just lagging products. It's uh, it's um, that light gauge galvanized iron piping that is meant to be used for fence posts and is actually being used to for TP discharges. And you see bundles of it at all the suppliers. You see all these taps and funny angle valves that are not SABS and not DZR. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a massive, massive, massive problem. So. Uh, you know, it, it, the PRB can't can't take on an entire economy. So what what it requires is the buy-in of guys like me and you. And we need to, when we're doing a new house, <clears throat> we need to say to Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry, these taps that you've bought here, uh, non-SABS, I can't install them. You need to go and find some proper taps or, or angle valves or or whatever, and um, hopefully put the pressure on from the from that side. Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's a problem that's not going to go away soon. Um, um, the market will di dictate what the market will dictate, and, and I mean, as long as Oaks are buying it and flying under the radar and doing stuff, um, you know, that they shouldn't be doing, th there will be a market for it. And any retailer is going to say, well, hell, I'm not going to give up. Uh, 20 grand a month uh, revenue just because you know somebody says I must you know this so yeah <clears throat> it's a big problem I don't all know. right we've got we've just got um, one or two more questions that if we can get quick answers then there won't be any left out the first one reads what is the correct way to seal the pipe going through the roof uh, have I got it here uh, deck tight deck tight is something that I use um, Gosh, where will I find that? Uh, it's in a different presentation. Uh, can I? You can. You can still see my screen, right? So if I just go and we can. I'm just going to stop this presentation, okay? If I can. So just bear with me. You can ask me the next question. So long, actually. Right. Okay. So the next one is: Is it regulation to cover the pipe in the wall? Uh, 
it and, and that would go back to manufacturers. Um, plastic pipes, yes, in the standards does require that plastic pipes are not rigidly encased in walls or floors. Um, and for copper pipes, I think you would re have to refer back to manufacturers and 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 like a, a copper tube Africa, for example, um, will say to you, yes, please, you need to you need to wrap our product when you're putting it into wall because of the acidity of the cement or whatever. If that's the case, then yes. So we the standards often defer to um, manufacturers, right? And so um, in most cases, I think it would be I think the answer would be yes. All right. Sorry, Richard. I am going to cut you off now um, without that answer go. for the previous there question. We there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's the dictate. Okay. Oop. <laughs> Sorry. No, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I will send you that question via email. It has gone 22. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Please remember the survey and your PRB registration numbers on the way out. Thanks cool so much beans. again, guys. See you Ciao. guys next week.